How my soul praises the Lord. How my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he took notice of this lowly servant girl. And from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For my mighty Lord is holy, and he has done great things for me. For six hours on Friday, as Jesus is dying, Mary's heart is breaking. They say that just before you die, that your life flashes in front of your eyes. That you relive life's most defining moments and the memories just come flooding back. Don't you think that was probably true for Mary as well? As she watches her son die this horrible death, don't you think she probably made a very painful trip down memory lane? Traveled back in time just trying to make sense of it all. How did it come to this? Because I'm sure that she never imagined that this would be God's plan for her life. I have beaten and scourged this man. I find that enough punishment. He's no kid. And how many of us have had a moment like that today where we look around at our life and we say, how did it come to this? I am innocent of this man's blood. Let his blood be on us and on our children. This isn't how I thought things would work out. This isn't the way I thought my story would go. What do you do when you realize that God might have a plan for your life that's very different from your own? Take him to the place of the skull and crucify him. Knowing your son was to be crucified must have been the worst of all horrors for a first century mother. In the ancient world, there were many forms of execution. Maybe they would stone someone. Still other times it would just be a simple stroke of the sword. They might even poison someone with hemlock. They knew how to do it very cheaply and efficiently. The crucifixion, on the other hand, it required time and money, manpower. It required a centurion and four soldiers. So why crucify anyone? Well, they did it when they wanted to maximize the pain. And they crucified someone when they really wanted that person to be publicly humiliated. It's such a different ending than the one Mary would have expected. Her story began with so much hope and promise. The announcement of God's plan for her life came while she was engaged to Joseph. An angel appeared to her and said, You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. 
He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel. I am a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary said. May it be to me as you have said. God's plan for Mary's life begins with this glorious announcement from an angel. The angel's announcement, an unplanned pregnancy. I am sure that is not how Mary imagined her teenage years playing out. But the Bible tells us that when she realizes this is God's plan for her, she obediently embraces it. And yet I wonder, I mean, if she knew this was God's plan, don't you think she assumed it would be a trouble-free pregnancy and everything would just sort of come together? And so, after giving birth in a stable and running for her life from an evil king who wanted to kill her son, I think she probably questioned if God had really thought this whole plan out. Sometimes we have those same questions. I mean, if this is really God's plan, then why do I have financial problems? Or why didn't I get the job I applied for? We think if it's God's plan, we won't have trouble in our marriage, that our children will grow up healthy. We have these expectations. I mean, if our story is really being written by God, if he's the author, then we expect a happily ever after ending. After beating and torturing Jesus beyond recognition, the Roman soldiers put the patibulum, which is the horizontal beam of the cross, on his back. Perhaps some of the vertebrae were exposed from the flogging, but this 125-pound beam is placed on his open wounds. It's no wonder that Jesus would have had a difficult time carrying the cross as he stumbled down the narrow streets of Jerusalem, taking a path that has become known as the Via Dolorosa, the Way of Grief. The Via Della Rosa was not the shortest path to Calvary, but it led through the heart of town. It was a crowded route. The idea was that people would see what was going on, and by the time they got to the place of execution, a decent crowd would have gathered. They would turn it into a public spectacle, almost like a sporting event, and the people would taunt and humiliate the man being crucified. Perhaps Mary followed her son through the streets, watching the bloodthirsty mob growing with every step. And she would have remembered this was such a different response to her son than when he was born. They took Jesus to the temple to be blessed. A man named Simeon had been promised that he would hold the predicted Messiah before he died. And so God brings him to Mary and Joseph. Stop! Stop! Please, let me hold him. Oh, 
sovereign Lord. Now, as you have promised, dismiss your servant in peace. For I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all men, a light for the revelation of the Gentiles and for your glory to your people Israel. God bless you. This child is destined to cause the rising and falling of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against to reveal the thoughts of many hearts. And a sword shall pierce your own soul as well. What a beautiful moment. What a joyous occasion. What powerful confirmation that Mary is walking in God's perfect will for her life. Until he speaks those final words. And a sword shall pierce your own soul too. What's he mean by that? Standing in the temple holding her beautiful baby, that had to be confusing. But now, watching as her son's life ebbs away, maybe she understood what he meant. But was this really God's plan all along? If so, Mary doesn't get it. And I don't get it either. It seems that if we're walking with God, if we're following His will, that we should be protected from pain, that we should be sheltered from suffering. But it doesn't always work that way. It's as if we're standing on the backside of a Persian rug, and we can see the threads and all the material, but everything's a mess and nothing makes sense. It's because we're looking at it from the wrong perspective. We can't see things from where God sits. And so sometimes we look at our lives and we think, why is this happening to me? It just doesn't make any sense. pain was yet to come. My soul praises the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he remembered his lowly servant girl. And now all generations will call me blessed.
For my mighty Lord is holy, and he has done great things for me. I cannot imagine what Mary must have been feeling as she knelt at the foot of the cross and looked up at her son dying. I can't imagine what she must have been thinking. I mean, her very soul must have cried out, Why is this happening? How could God allow this? What is he doing up there? Maybe she remembered years ago where the angel made this promise that her son would reign forever in a kingdom without end. Maybe she remembered the promise in the temple that he would be the savior of all nations. Well, what is she to think of those promises now? Had God abandoned her? Had he betrayed her or lied to her? I know the Bible says that God's ways are not our ways, but it's our life. I mean, you would at least think we would have some understanding of the journey. Oftentimes we just feel in the dark. I remember when those uh, GPS systems first came out on cars. You'd have a little voice come on to tell you what turn to take, what to expect. There would be a virtual map that would let you know what street you would be taking around the corner. I just wish God worked a little bit more like that, you know? He would tell us what turns are coming up. He wouldn't let us get caught off guard by a curve. Better yet, God will tell you where we want to go when you just get us there. But oftentimes, we just don't understand. Look at this! We have an audience with the Christ! <laughs> what kind of king would want to be seen with you? <laughs> he saved others! He can't <laughs> save himself! <laughs> He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will all believe. I got was this. All right, then let's roll for it. From the cross, her son and savior 
speaks to her. A woman. This is your son. John. This is your mother. Even in this moment, he is thinking of her. I, I wonder if it was in this moment that Mary realized this is why he came. He was born to die. This was all part of God's plan. And maybe she realized, though her life didn't go as she expected, not everything happened how she would have planned it. Everything had unfolded just the way God wanted. And when God's plan isn't clear, when life brings pain, and a lot of questions. God can be trusted. And that, that changes everything.